All right, uh, welcome back, everybody. So our visual's picking up a, a little bit of a bumper bashing that's happening here uh, close to the area. So that's what happens when you've got some live visuals. I think that's the corner of, uh, yeah, it is, Barry Herzog and Empire, uh, quite close to the Mopar Clinic. So uh, you can see that there's been an accident there. Looks like somebody has, uh, has gone over the pavement there. And uh, anyway, you can see that the, uh, the police are on the scene and attending to that one as well. So just a heads up as you're leaving for work this morning. Professor Harun Borat, who serves on the Presidential Economic Advisory Council, says the social relief of distress grant is not increasing the chance of getting employment in South Africa. He is questioning the efficacy of COVID grants in the job creation. He is instead suggesting that the money should be allocated to the informal sector to spur investment-driven growth. Professor Borat says although the SRD grant led to an early increase in the likelihood of employment of 3%, this impact is not sustained. Now, the 350 rand social relief of distress grant was introduced at the height of the pandemic as a temporary measure to provide income support to the unemployed. Professor Borat, a director of the Development Policy Research Unit at the University of Cape Town, joins us virtually to expand on this uh, on the subject. Prof, thanks very much and welcome to Morning Live. Great. Thank you, Leanne. Thanks very much. So you are questioning the long-term impact of the grant on job searching and, and enterprise formation. Explain to us why. So what we did, Leanne, was we, we did a fairly careful what we call econometric study. So we use sort of uh, the labor force survey data, which is fairly standard in the kind of research methods that we use. And we asked the question, did getting the SRD relative to not getting the SRD improve outcomes in terms of employment, firstly, starting a business, importantly, and secondly, um, job search. And so what we find initially, so in the first sort of quarter or so, uh, post the SRD for the data that we have, the impact on employment is positive at about 3%. For opening a business at about one percent but really importantly not emphasized enough in the media reports is that the impact on job search was zero always mm -hmm. right but then what we find is as you go through the quarters and the srd is continuously sort of um, um, allocated to recipients uh, it actually has no significant impact on employment outcomes or on starting a business in fact in one of the model specifications it reduces the probability of finding a job, not even insignificant. And so the point, the point I've been trying to make, uh, Leanne, is that you have to ask the first question if we want to continue with the SRD, which is what are we trying to solve for? So if we're trying to solve for employment and generate jobs or get people into searching for jobs, or get people into starting businesses, it's not clear that the SRD is necessarily the best instrument. So if we're trying to sort for jobs and to create employment, let's have that conversation about what else is available. Now, uh, just to sort of get all the facts on the table, that does not mean that there are no other poverty instruments or the fact that that does not mean that the SRD does not reduce poverty levels or does not assist in uh, food security. But then you have to ask the question, is the SRD the best instrument? Should you perhaps um, look at school feeding schemes or uh, ramping up existing social grants and so on? And I think that for me is the full sort of parameters of uh, the arguments I've made with respect to the SRD. Yeah. I mean, Prof, when, when you look at that, I mean, this is... This, this grant is being given to, one would say, half the population. About 30 million people are getting this grant. And to, and to just take it away, I, I imagine would have a, a very devastating effect on a lot of people's lives. We look at the grant and think, obviously, 350 rand. I mean, what are you doing with that? But people are desperate for that kind of money. I understand your reasoning, but taking it away um, and, and directing it elsewhere and whether or not they actually even see that money is going to be a problem. So, I mean, would you, you know, would you, would so you me, to comment on yeah, that? So let me, let, me, let, me, let me put the following thought experiment to you and ask you, Leanne, right, as, as now the Minister of Finance or the Minister of Social Development, the following question. You have, you have millions of people on the SRD and it costs X rands, right? But I say to you, that in fact, if I do the modeling work on poverty and inequality effects, it turns out that 
perhaps, and I'm not saying this is the case, but this could be the thought experiment that if you double the value of existing child support grant, the existing old age pension, and let's say you introduced a food parcel program nationally and that you could target to orphan headed households, for example, and you used and, and you reached millions of households and individuals, obviously in the case of the existing grants. Um, and that has a bigger poverty impact relative to continuing with the SRD. Mm. What would you do? Yeah, yeah. I understand that and I suppose... And so, so, so my, point, my point really has always been, let's not have a false sort of dichotomy to say uh, you want to remove the SRD. That's not, that's not what's being argued. What we're arguing is, well, what are you trying to solve for? So if you're trying to solve for poverty and inequality in the society, well, then you should have a proper discussion about what the best instruments are. Is supporting the unemployed and those in the informal sector necessarily the best instrument? And I guess that's that's the only key point I'm really making in a way. Indeed. And, and one can understand that because, but, but, but when you wake up starving every single morning, as, as it's been sort of predicted that about one in five South Africans go through that, is that they, they don't have money. And this grant is spent uh, mostly towards actually just getting some form of food uh, is what they do go and buy in terms of getting this 350 rand. I mean, if it is directed into other avenues, as you say, this money, I mean, are they guaranteed? of getting it and that's and that's i suppose where the question comes in so what if we what if we triple the value of existing child support grants which in real value have actually gone down um or double the value of the old age pension and the cost was the same i haven't done any calculations i'm just sort of thumb sucking mm. uh, and you ramped up the value of um food security programs to uh to uh, poverty stricken households you, there is no question in my mind that the poverty effects are not insubstantial of doing that. And, and that's all I'm saying is that if you, you have to think carefully about, it doesn't mean because the policy is in place that it's necessarily the best one for improving food security. Let's look at the options while we have the time yeah. in terms of reach and uh, dealing with food security uh, um, in a more optimal, in a more um, uh, equal manner, actually, uh, and, and maybe what you do. So if you are, if I could put it in a, maybe in a micro sense, if you are a, if you are a poor household uh, in rural KwaZulu-Natal um, that has no access to grants um, but can't get the SRD because there's no adult in the household or there's no unemployed person in the household, then the SRD is not helping you. Right. So you have to find so the so the different policy fixes. Yes, I understand that you may not necessarily uh, the money may not reach everybody, but leakages exist across all grants. Right. Mm. Corruption will exist across all grants and all poverty intervention programs. So it's just a little bit of a challenge to say, well, can we think about the best possible um, instrument given what we're trying to solve for? So if we agree, we're not trying to solve for employment. Fine. So the SRD we know is not the route. So now if we're trying to solve for pop, uh, food security or um, general sort of poverty and inequality challenges, what is the mix? So one example is the Minister of Finance has suggested very informally, um, it's not policy or anything. He said, well, why don't we collapse all of the grants into a single family grant, yeah. right? And so that's the kind of thinking, it's just the, the request that we allow the data and the analytics to guide the policy instead of just pure path dependency. Because if you recall, the SRD was set in place as an emergency response to COVID. It wasn't set as a response to food security. Now that we have it in place, um, we suddenly think that that's the only way to think about food security and poverty and inequality. And, and certainly we do need other mechanisms. And, and this is something that is important. But I mean, you know, just, just one idea that stuck in my head was increasing the child grant. And that already is one issue where people are saying, well, it's leading to underage pregnancies and unwanted pregnancies because people are wanting the money for a child grant. But we won't get into that. But that, that's just, we, we, I know you addressed grants and, and how the system does work and doesn't work. But other people agree that unemployment is the serious crisis that we're dealing with right now um, and that that needs to be addressed through a comprehensive policy framework. But this, this should not come at the expense of meeting people's immediate basic needs. So, so what do we say about that? Yes, so, so the, I guess the subtler point I try to make 
So, so let's assume that um, within the fiscal envelope that Treasury provides, you could actually pivot, so let's call it some of the SRD money towards more optimal, more effective poverty in uh, poverty reducing and food security um, uh, enhancing uh, support. Um, the employment generation policy uh, focus, in my view, needs significant ramping up. If you look at um, experience around the developing world, um, there's a lot more work that's gone into what we call active labor market policies, whether it's uh, aiding job search, uh, training, uh, and, and other forms of active labor market policies are actually very, very poor in South Africa. The other, the other point I've made constantly is that if you look at the average developing country, they are able to what we call close their labor market. In other words, they're able to generate jobs um, in the formal sector in the same way that we can, but they, so in other words, the output employment elasticity is about the same as South Africa. So we're not really that bad at generating formal sector jobs. Our problem is that the informal sector in South Africa is much, much smaller than most other developing countries. It's a very strange way to think about this, but we are a country that has a very strange history uh, that has excluded the informal sector. And so one of the arguments I've made as one of the, uh, one of the instruments, not the only instrument, is that you have to think about giving more oxygen to the informal sector. Mm. The idea that people who move into cities, who move into urban areas should be allowed to operate and sell wherever and whatever legally that they want to. We shouldn't be focused on removing people from marketplaces, on removing people from cities. If you look at any developing country city from Sao Paulo through Mumbai to Manila, People are teeming all over the streets of those cities trying to sell you everything. Yeah, yeah. And we don't have that in South Africa. And that's the, that'll move the dial as one instrument for, for giving people a piece of the economic pie. And for me, that's, that's a really critical sort of uh, policy vision that we have to have. Indeed. Uh, I, we, we have to wrap it up. We've literally got um, 30 seconds here. But, I mean, the president himself is committed to, to actually transitioning this, this SRD into a basic income grant. Um, can that perhaps be the answer um, in terms of, of taking through with regard to existing and policy interventions that promote employment and investment? Is, is that the way to do it? So there's, you know, as one transitions, then you then you do. If if that transitions happens has, happens to a big, uh, then you've got to think about what kind of options are you creating for employment generation. Are there ways in which you can build in conditionalities for certain individuals to aid job search, to aid uh, starting up a job, uh, starting up a business, and so on. And I think that's where the conversation. Uh, could could lead as well. Yeah. All right. I know this is a big conversation, and I'm sure getting a lot of a lot of people thinking and and some views there, agreeing and disagreeing with you, no doubt, Prof. But uh, thank you. Thanks for talking to us. Interesting conversation, Professor Harun Borat, an economist at the University of Cape Town, saying that 350 rand a month grant has absolutely no impact on employment outcomes.